evening, Sri Lanka. It is with absolute pleasure that we welcome you to a very special episode of Pulse. Yeah. And before we continue with this episode, Anisha and I and the whole of Pulse would like to wish you all a very happy Singla and Tamil New Year. Subha Musubha Alutaro Dakweva. Now the month of April has always been very festive in Sri Lanka with a lot of traditions being conducted in a lot of households. But today we are going to talk to you about Arudu games which have been passed down from generation to generation and are played in almost every household in Sri Lanka. So the first game we're going to talk about is Olinda Kelia. It's usually played by two people and it's a board game playing on a wooden plank and it's also known as uh, Olinda Porua. Por yeah. yeah. So it's filled with nine holes and each hole is filled with uh, four Olinda seeds. And the aim of the game is to collect each seed as you go around each round and the person who has the most seeds wins the game. Now, did you know why they use Olinda seeds in this game? Uh, no, please do tell me. Well, in the villages, Olinda trees are found in abundance and the red seeds are very beautiful. So that's what villagers use to play this game. Uh, but did you know that in ancient times, Olinda seeds were also used to measure gold? Is it? Yep. Interesting. Very cool. Yeah. But in English, it's also known as crab's eye, right? Yep. known Arud game played by two teams, the Udupila and the Yatipila, who are separated by a line in the sand. Now it starts off by the Udupila throwing a coconut to the opponent's side and the opponent counter striking again with another coconut. The game continues until all of the opponent's coconuts are cracked. Do you know why they use coconuts though? Do tell. Okay, so back in the day, uh, the coconut was a symbol of uh, prosperity. Mm -hmm. So, and the act of hurling the coconuts towards each team is, uh, was like um, a ritual for the deity back in the day called Goddess Patini. All right. All right? And uh, Goddess Patini was a very revered deity back uh, for the Hindus and Buddhists back in the day. That's so cool. Nice, right? <laughs> talk about is called Ankelia. So this consists of two teams and it's also another ritual for the goddess Patini. And the two teams, one team uh, represents goddess Patini and the other team represents a spouse or another male, right? So the aim of the game is they take uh, buffalo horns and they go to the Angpitiya, also known as the tugging field. And uh, it's sim very similar to tug of war, I believe, right? Mm. So they start tugging at the horns and the first team that breaks their horns loses. Alright, that sounds very intense and brutal. Very intense, it does, I know. There's also a very cool Ankelia dance that I've seen performed at a lot of concerts, which might be quite interesting. Is it? Yep. We should check it out later. For sure. Alright. just a blindfolded version of run and catches. Oh, okay. The catch being there is a demarcated area where mm -hmm. the players can't run out of. Ooh. So one player is blindfolded and then made to catch the other players. 
Um, if the players run out of the circle, they lose. Mm -hmm. And if the catcher runs out of the circle, she's put back in there. Just stay there. There's no way out of this. <laughs> nope. Right. So the last player standing basically wins the game. Awesome. Sounds fun. Sounds but more intense simple. actually as well. Yeah. Because with the normal running catchers or blindfolded running catchers, you can actually run around anywhere, right? <laughs> yep. This one you can't. All right. So the fifth game we're going to talk about is called Listener Gaha Nagima. So basically what it is, it's um, a very tall pole, uh, greased up, mm -hmm. and, um, and there's a flag attached on the top. So the aim of the game is, um, like many people are going to try and climb the pole, but the first one to climb and reach that flag and grab it, is the first winner. The most fun part of it though is the audience that's surrounding you and cheering you on. Do you remember that scene in Mulan where she's like climbing the pole? Oh, just about to mention to you. To the flag. Right, yeah. yeah. But, that um, is. It took a lot, while though, Yeah. but with this game, people are not actually encouraging you <laughs> to bring you down. Yeah. And then <laughs> it's a lot of effort, a lot of body strength that you need to get up there and get yeah. that flag. But quite fun. Yeah. brings us to the game of Kottapura. Everyone knows it, everyone loves it. It's a very laughter-inducing, very cheerful game, which is basically the Sri Lankanized version of a pillow fight, oh, but pillow more fights. intense, mm -hmm. way more intense. So there's a horizontal pole that two players get on top of. The catch is that one of their hands is pinned behind their back mm -hmm. and the other has a pillow in it. The aim of the game is to knock your opponent off using the pillow. Oh. So there's a lot of people cheering you on and a lot of people trying to bring you down. But when you win, it's just a feeling like no other. Yeah. But that's quite intense though, like mm -hmm. one hand behind the back and a pillow. You know, we're both at a disadvantage right you there You know, let's well. put you up on a pole and see how you fare. <laughs> Not the first time. <laughs> let's go on. <laughs> It's called Kanamuti Bidima. So, what that game is basically is like a um, uh, Sri Lankan versionized of pinata, mm -hmm. right? So, you have like around four to five pots hang up on a horizontal pole, and then you are blindfolded and given a bamboo stick. And then the aim of the game is to break the clay pot, break one clay pot which contains a color, mm -hmm. and the other clay pots are contain contains water and sand. Yeah, right. So, the first person that breaks the clay pot with the water color or water sand. Uh, wins the game. You're gonna get bathed with that coloured water. Yeah, pinky one. <laughs> <laughs> game is Kamba Adima, which is basically a Sri Lankan version of Tag of War. This has built communities across the island and brings everyone together to participate in one singular game. So there are two teams on either side of the Kamba or the rope and there is a demarcated middle spot with tied with a ribbon or say some kind of what? Coconut leaf? Okay. <laughs> All right. So the aim of the game is for one team to pull the middle part of the ribbon towards their side okay. and basically you win. The most joyous part of it is when the other team topples over and uh -huh. you just like, you know you've won the day. All that pulling and pushing, <laughs> you know, Definitely. Won, yeah.
final game of the evening, which is more of a competition rather than a game, is the Arudu Kumari and Kumaraya competition. This is a game that is played to determine the most eligible bachelor or bachelorette of the village. Okay. Yeah. So all of the good looking boys and girls are put up there on stage and they are judged according to, the women are judged according to a category called Pancha Kalyani, which is the five most beautiful features of a woman. Uh, what the five features mean? Well, it changes from skin to their figure to the longest hair. Oh. So the judges are sitting there and they're looking for all these features in these beautiful women. And the most beautiful is awarded the prize of the Arudu Kumari. Nice. Fancy. Yep. Fancy. <laughs> Now these are just a handful of the traditions that have been passed down from generation to generation in our country. And other than the games, there are also a few things that you can uh, get involved with as entertainment, such as Raban Gasima, which is the drums that we play on Aru the Day, and then Onchili Padima, which is the swings that the children ride on on Aru the Day. And it is oh, quite wonderful everything that happens on this day. The best part of our the season is I think it's where everyone comes together you know they don't it doesn't discriminate gender height race age it doesn't matter from which background you are everyone just comes together during the season just to have a really good time and just forget every worry in the world but Ikram, I think one of the most beautiful things we do as a country is that we celebrate a Nakat Villa or an auspicious time where the whole country gets together and there's one action at one specific time mm -hmm. from say lighting the hearts to the way you eat food to trading gifts, you all, we all do it as one country at one specific time. That's nothing more amazing than that, isn't yeah. it? And that brings us to the end of our program. And before we leave, we would like to wish you all again a very prosperous, cheerful and joyful Singhala and Tamil New Year. Labuau Nava Arudda, Singhala Damala Samatama, Suba Arudda Arudda